Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. This lesson is about the semantic web. For the past decade, Tim Berners-Lee and the World Wide Web Consortium have been promoting a new internet information model that they call the semantic web. The idea is that if we can mark up our content in a similar way that HTML marks it up, but in a fashion that allows us to program for better understanding on the part of the computer, then we can give meaning to our data that a computer can work with. That allows us to link data from different areas together and provide us with a much more rich interaction capabilities on the web. So in this lesson, we'll be discussing some of the technologies that make up the semantic web, including RDF and OWL, as well as some additional technologies that are popular known as RDFA and microformats. With its use of customized element names for which a software application can then be intelligently programmed, XML forms a basis for this semantic web. Building on the foundation of a broader interpretation of uniform resource indicators, or URIs, and the custom naming capabilities of XML, we get what's known as RDF. RDF stands for Resource Description Format, and it is focused on metadata, that is, information about the information contained in your web resource. Tim Berners-Lee is a big fan of metadata. It infuses just about everything he's done with the web. And RDF is kind of the crowning achievement of what he hopes will become the web's future. The idea of RDF is based on the concept of triples, that you have a subject, a predicate, and the object of that predicate. Let's take a look at how that works. Here's an example of how we might set up an RDF triple. Let's say we take a basic statement about a web resource. We'll say that Scott Anderson contributed material for educator.com's XML course offerings. That's how we might state it in basic English. Here we have the same statement, only formatted in a slightly different order to facilitate getting it into an RDF triple. We'll say educator.com's XML course this is going to be our subject here, has a contributor, that's going to be our predicate, named Scott Anderson, and that's going to be our object. So here we have, again, our subject, our predicate, and our object. Now, what RDF allows us to do is express each of these ideas using namespaces and URIs. So, for example, our subject, educator.com's XML area, can be referred to as actual URI on the web, which would look something like this. Our predicate can be referred to by this URI here, DC standing for Dublin Core, which is a metadata initiative, the idea being to come up with a sort of default set of information about just about any web resource you can imagine, whether it's a document or a picture or a website or a print material migrated to the web, anything like that. And you can take a look at dublincore.org to see uh, what their work looks like. Essentially what they've done is create a set of RDF-friendly elements that can be used to describe each of these. So contributor is one of these elements and that can form our predicate. And then the object could be referred to by its own URI. Uh, this is not a real web resource or web area, but it might be a central database somewhere of online video educators and then I would be part of that. So using URIs, we can create this RDF triple and that allows us to express the concept that educator.com's XML course has a contributor named Scott Anderson. And that way we can put it in a way that we know the computer already understands. The computer already knows how to process a URI. And now we have this idea, this semantic idea, expressed in terms that the computer can read.